two, one. Hello, everyone. Today's a unique one. Uh, typically, we talk about investing strategy or markets or economics. Today, we're going to talk to the entrepreneurs out there that are trying to raise capital and how to do that through the podcast or YouTube mediums. Uh, my guest, Trevor Oldham, helps people do this. Trevor, how are you doing? I'm new and excellent today. I'm, I'm excited to be here and excited to speak to your audience today. Awesome. Did I sum it up correctly in terms of kind of what you do or why don't, yeah, why don't you give us that a was, little spiel? Yeah. yeah, that was perfect. So we, so one part of it, we help real estate, you know, specifically real estate. You know, I sort of say entrepreneurs because sometimes you can see a real estate investor. They, they have their own deals they're putting together. They have their own property management company. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of aspects into it. And, and typically what we do for someone is we, you know, first and foremost, help them raise capital. But other than that, help them like get more brand exposure, help network with potential partners, get them to meet, you know, other hosts that could, you know, potentially help them out. So it's a little mixture of that, but more often than not, it is helping these real estate entrepreneurs to raise capital for their next deal so that they always have sort of an unlimited funding source. And what, what size of, I mean, what's your average size of a deal? Yeah. So typically the deal can go anywhere from, you know, a small deal, you're looking at 500 K, you know, maybe, you know, not that many units, maybe 10 units or so where we've had, we've been able to help people raise millions of dollars and, you know, raise millions of dollars in equity where they're trying to, you know, finance a deal that's 5 million and they need to put 1 million into it. And then we just help them raise their capital um, through the through the medium, which is podcast guesting. Yep, you know it's it's interesting because I I myself am uh, partaking in a hundred unit build out right now, land up development. Um, okay, so what I'm seeing in the in the industry is a lot of bankers, not so much on the equity side, but more on the debt side. Uh, they're really focused on the distressed asset purchase and then the forced equity through rehabs and then selling thereafter. Um, I where really the land development is where the big margins are. So what are you seeing in the industry in terms of what types of products they're willing to lend to? Yeah, I'm, you know, honestly, it's anything that's, that they feel as though is a great deal. You know, we've worked in industries such as, you know, your, your traditional multifamily, you know, commercial real estate. They find people that are packaging up, doing mobile home park self-storage. And then we even find deals where we call them, where people are calling them re recession resistant funds. So it's a mixture of, of multifamily, commercial, mobile home parks, and then also the self-storage. And they're just sort of, packaging that fund up and then trying to finance, you know, all these projects under one roof. So honestly, it, it just, it's whatever, as long as it's a good deal, as long as the banks can be able to make money off of it and get a return on their end, then as long as that makes sense, it's, it's typically not too hard to get the deal done. Wow. So that's, um, that's, that's music to my ears because I've been dealing with a lot of painful banks. Um, and we have some phenomenal margins on, on this one deal. So you and I will have to talk after this, uh, this, this, this podcast for sure. So <laughs> cool. So why don't you um, walk us through kind of maybe like a one, how many steps are in the process and maybe quickly highlight each step in the process of funding. Yeah, so typically the, the first one is finding out, you know, what, what you're offering. And then second, you know, once you have the offering, you know, making sure that it's SEC compliant so that they're not, you know, we're not putting you on a show. You're talking about a deal and an offering that, you know, hasn't been approved yet. So we don't want to get you and any trouble, you know, especially I don't want that, that coming back to our company, you don't know, run into any trouble with the SEC. And then once that deal is done, then it's more or less just going out to these shows, presenting, you know, our client and the offering that they have, and then having them go out there and talk about it. And we typically, you know, not just putting them on real estate shows, typically targeting shows with accredited investors, because that's what we find most investors, that's the money that they're taking in. So we think of doctors, lawyers, dentists, you know, anyone that's going to, you know, be pulling in probably 250 a year or have that $1 million net worth. So by targeting those accredited investors, that's more often than not, because sometimes we, you'll see someone in real estate and they want to target other real estate investors, but sometimes that's not necessarily where the money is, where you get a dentist yep. that has a high income, but they don't want to be a dentist forever. And they want to put their money somewhere else where they, you know, they might have 50 K or hundred K lying around that they can help fund your deal with it. Yep. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Uh, you, your service is, is really outstanding then. Um, Cause there is that, that divide, right? Where there's people that are hungry. Uh, I mean, I, I have a big network of people that are curious and engineers and executives, and they want to put their money into places, but they don't know where to go, right? They don't, they know they, it's a good idea to diversify and put their, put their money in real estate investments. They don't know really how to do it and they don't know who to even trust, right? So you offer this mm -hmm. forum where it's like, hey, look, here are some projects, right? And here, is a way for you as an accredited investor to invest in these projects through, you know, a legitimate 506B or C SEC compliant mm -hmm. way, correct? 
Yep, correct. So, so typically we will have our client that has the offering and then we'll just help them get that offering out there and then get them, you know, get more trust, get more credibility, that sort of thing. So the client that's putting together the deal that they can go out there and share what they have going on. Yep. No, that's fantastic. So, um, yeah, that's great. So maybe, um, okay. So, so, so step one, you review the offering, you make sure it's compliant with, uh, SEC guidelines and then, what as a as a real estate entrepreneur, I have a project. Let's say I'm trying to find I don't know three million dollars of funding. Uh, what's the next step? Yep. So then, really, the next step is so our team would go out there and we place the investors on these podcasts that we know that accredited investors are going to be listening to people that have a high net worth. And we you know we, we could put you on a show and you might go on it and you might raise no capital. But we like to put you on, you know, as many shows as possible to give you the best, like we say, you know, there's no guarantees that we're going to be able to help you fund your deal, but we want to put you in the best advantageous spot to help you fund your deal. You know, we're not necessarily raising the capital. You still got to go out there and talk about the deal that you're putting together, but we want to help you as much as possible. And from that, it's just putting them, making sure we're putting them on the right show. Like we're not going to put them on a show for beginner real estate investors. Like it wouldn't, right. it's not going to make a whole lot of sense because we are targeting the big money. And that's really what we do is we really like to just to hone in on those accredited investor shows to, to be able to put these people on. Yeah. No, and, and, and that makes sense hundred percent. Right. Um, you, you definitely don't want a newbie investing in a complex deal. <laughs> that, that is a lawsuit and a half. Um, yep. So, right. So um, that's cool. I mean, well, okay, so without getting into the weeds, right? Obviously, you need to pay your bills and feed your family and everything else. Um, you you obviously make money from doing this, right? Yep, yep, I do. Yep. So so I don't get any like acquisition or brokerage fee. So I just basically we charge like a fat f- fee for our marketing services. Well, we'll go out and book a client on an X number of podcasts, and on a per podcast basis, they'll pay us, you know, an an, an X amount, and that's how we get our fee. I really think that eventually I should structure my, the deal to be a little bit different where I'd much rather get like a one, you know, I know if they're getting a one to 2% brokerage fee, if I could get like a quarter percent of 1%, it would probably be better than what I'm, yeah. what I'm getting paid now. I could see, um, and it's almost like we're having this interview, but we're almost strategizing on a, on a business, which is great. Um, I could see a situation in which you would negotiate maybe some profit share from the, from mm-hmm. the project as well versus a one-time fee. Um, I mean, cause some of these, projects are huge profits, right? Um, and then also on the, on the back end, you would take some money from the, from the, from the brokering of the fees, right? It's, which can be a kind of a sticky industry with all the regulation, but uh, there's a lot of opportunities for you also to, to make money too. Because honestly, the, the service you're providing is from someone who's done this and gone through the process of acquiring capital, you know, I've had to meet people on the fly and then talk to them about it over drinks. And it's like, it's, you know, it's a lot of work. And you're essentially yeah. pulling all those efforts into one, which is going to save an, a, a real estate entrepreneur a ton of time, right? So your your value prop from this service is bold and clear. Yep, yep, exactly. We like to make it as, as easy as possible for them to go on these shows to raise capital so that they're not running around having to meet all these investors. They basically go on an interview, spend 30, 45 minutes of their time. Now it's going to go out to, you know, 500 or a thousand potential people that could be investing with them. So instead of having to meet, you know, one person here, one person there, all of a sudden you're able to get into the ears of 500 or a thousand people. And then even more than that sometimes. Yep. No, that's awesome. Um, are you, uh, and maybe you're not, are you able to share some of the shows that you are able to get people on? Yeah. I mean, when you're looking at the top, you know, let's say the top real estate shows you're talking, you know, Every now and then we'll get a client on bigger pockets. You know, that's that's number one. That's a little bit harder because they only produce a weekly episode. But if you're talking like Joe Fairless, the best real estate investing show ever, um, Whitney Sewell, the real estate syndication show, um, Rod Cleef, you know, lifetime cash flow through real estate investing, you know, we're always getting clients on those shows. They're always looking for quality guests. And because of the way that we, you know, we're a marketing agency, so we charge a little bit, you know, we charge... I don't want to say a, a, a huge amount, but we charge a good enough price where the only clients we're taking on are qualified people that are successful yeah. enough where they can afford it. And because of that, it's easier to get them on these shows where if someone's been an investor for one year and they only have five or 10 units, it's it's going to be hard to spin their story where if we work with someone that has, you know, a hundred units, you know, not through any syndication, just on their own, it's it's typically easier to get them on these larger shows. Yeah. And well, I mean, think about it too, you know, I, I, I tell my clients when you give money, the most important factor is the team, 
or the person that you're giving the money to, right? And so you wouldn't give a half million dollars to someone who's never picked up a hammer. <laughs> you, know, so, you know, so it, it experience definitely matters. Um, that's cool. Um, so maybe I'm going to stop asking questions in, um, for now. And maybe do you have any questions or other thoughts that you might want to share to, to, to my audience? Yeah, I think, you know, I think when it comes to it, you know, when people, because people are, are traditionally raising capital where it's, you know, maybe going to meetups, it's having conversations with people. I find that investors are sometimes, they may have heard of a podcast, they may have listened to a podcast, but going on a podcast, I, you know, I was talking to an investor yesterday, he was in the commercial space, sold his whole portfolio. Now he's raising capital to go into multifamily and mobile home parks. And it's something, you know, he's never gone on a show, but he, he's realizing that like, it's sort of the way to, to help yeah. raise capital. So it, it's probably going to be uncomfortable in the beginning, if, especially if you've never gotten behind a mic, if you don't you've never bought a microphone. So I think that's probably the, the hardest part as an investor trying to raise capital is because it's something different. It's something you've never done before, especially, you know, most people who work for, they're 40 and 50 years old. They're not, you know, a younger generation where they, they haven't really grown up with this as much. So I figure, you know, more or less, it's a learning curve that most investors have to come over, come to in, in raising capital through podcasting. Yep. Yeah, agreed. So, uh, you know, I guess I'll just put it out there. Um, if I'm a first time, let's say, I, you know, I, I have, a, I don't know, 10 rentals and now I, I have an opportunity. I found a 30 unit building. The loan amount is a million, million five, let's just say. Right. But I don't have all the experience in doing that kind of project. Am I automatically disqualified or is that something that you think is still viable? So based off that criteria, I would, I would probably say no, just given. Yep. So basically the accredited investors, are, I know that they're going to want to see your track record. And even though the 30 unit might be a good deal, only having 10 units, it's, it's from our perspective, we're, you're probably not going to see a good benefit out of it just because you might get leads from it. But those people might say 10 units is just too little. We yep. want to work with an operator that has a hundred units under their deal. So, you know, just from our standpoint, not that you couldn't see success, it's just going to be a little bit harder um, when you're beginning with it. Yeah, I agree. I, and I, again, I mean, I, good, like, rightfully so, right? I mean, it, it, again, mm -hmm. if I'm putting a half million dollars into a deal, you better be damn sure I'm going to make sure that there's yeah. limited downside risk, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah and, and I was just literally just doing a, um, a quarterly update on my from my clients and. Um, and, you know, there's a major problem right now in the market with subcontractors. There's a, one, there's a shortage of them. So they're just walking off jobs if they're not paid fast enough or if they've got a better offer. Um, and, and, and two, it's just, it's just a pain to manage them. So they're, that alone um, should scare off anyone who's going to do a first project until you get your hands around how to manage subcontractors. Uh, I wouldn't even touch a big deal because that in itself is a massive undertaking, right? Um, and then, yeah, I mean, to your point, like you learn from mistakes in real estate, right? Like mm -hmm. I've been doing this for 12 years and I've gone through a number of mistakes, some that are just laughable um, now, that, now that, that I look back. But it, it, it takes a ton of time and mistakes to really build up the experience to give the confidence to your credit investors as, hey, look, we've analyzed the number, the numbers, our systems are in place. We know how to manage subcontractors. We have materials down to a T. We have cushions baked in and all the things that were coming to planning to make sure that your investors actually bite on, on the offer. Um, and so would, would you agree with that? Or for those that are considering doing this, what are some tips and tricks that they should be thinking about before they come to the table? Yeah. So I think that that's good that, you know, having that experience and even if you don't have experience, cause there are shows out there and we, you know, we're just, we're not going to place you on these shows, but there are shows like there's a big podcast, like bigger pockets. I believe it's like, Bigger Pockets Real Estate Rookie, where they want to bring someone on who has four, you know, I think it's four units or under four deals and under, where someone can go out there that's more, wants to go on podcasts, but doesn't necessarily want to raise capital at the moment, but still wants to get the experience of what it's like being on a show. Then you could go out there and, and you could apply to those shows. And, you know, it's really just like, what's the track record? Because we don't, you know, if you're investing, let's say 5K with us, we don't want you to just to blow through that 5K when you could be spending it anywhere else. We want to make sure that if you're spending 5k with us, you're at least able to raise a couple hundred thousands of dollars on your end so that you're going to make off your, just, just off your fees, you're making more than what you're paying us. And it's, that's going to be hard to do if you don't have a good track record for us to spin it in a oh, way. Yeah. And then of course, you know, because I can just picture down like in the future, you're going to get on these shows. People are going to be interested. They're going to hop on a call with you. 
it's going to set, you know, you're going to get leads and then all of a sudden you don't have a track record. And then they're going to be like, eh, you know, this guy doesn't, you know, he's only been in the business two years. You know, I don't know if I want to invest my money, you know, I invest my money with them and, and like, I can picture it down in the future and, and it is hard, you know, it is hard turning away clients. But at the yeah. end of the day, it's like, if I can't help you hundred percent, we're going to, we're going to have to. And you know, who knows down the road, once you get more units and, and are looking to raise more capital, it could be a little bit easier. Yep. Awesome. And let me hit you with one last question here and kind of a, probably a tough question, I guess, to some, to some extent. So let's say I tell your project, you say, yep, this is going to work out. So sign here on the dotted lines. Thank you for the payment. You, you make it all happen. I, I, I get on shows and no one bites on the opportunity. What, what then happens? Yep. So at that point, what we do is we, we are, you know, basically we have an, a money back guarantee. So let's say for any reason you aren't happy, we refund you your money, which is why we also do a, a ton of vetting up front to make sure that you yeah. are going to see a positive result. And I think we've been in business four years now, and that's only happened, I think, twice where the expectations were just a little off with those clients and, and we just refund them their their full money back. But again, it just goes back to the vetting process up front, making yeah. sure yeah. we're managing your expectations and making sure that we we can say what we're going to be able to do for them. Yeah, that, that's that's fantastic. Um, so I can tell that you and you and your team probably have you know, in, in your interest, the best interest of your client, as well as the investors. So that's, that's really good. That, that sort of integrity, I think will bode well long-term. So that's cool. Um, awesome. So where can, if people are interested, where can they find you? Whatever you tell me, I'll work with you, your team and everyone out there. I'll put the descriptions or the details in, in the descriptions and you can click there or email me and we'll put you in touch with Trevor and then um, we'll go from there. So Trevor, where can we find you? Any links, any promotions, any of that? Yeah. Yeah. The best place is so two places. One, if you're interested in working with our company to help raise capital, you can go to podcastingu.com slash real estate investors. Or if you think that you're newer, you want to try to get booked on podcasts yourself, try it out. You can go to podcastingu.com slash masterclass. And I put together a free training that walks you through everything you need to know to get yourself booked on shows. That's awesome. And again, everyone will put it in the link below. Um, feel free to email me and I'll put you in direct touch with Trevor and we'll go from there. Trevor, appreciate the time. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I hope your audience found some value. <laughs> Thank you.